Well, let's talk about uh, this book a little bit in depth so that we can, because um, uh, it is an important book, so we'll have a couple of parts here. So first of all, he was the author, Paul Dung, D-O-N-G, uh, was born in 1928. He's 92 years old, so I guess he's doing something pretty good. Um, from the Guangdong province of China. Now, uh, I'm assuming he was born there. From what I understand, he lives in Northern California in the San Francisco area. Um, he's written many books, and I think it's important to uh, note that. Um, well, I don't know many books. He's written quite a few, and um, uh, this is uh, something that... Um, uh, people should know. Of course, this book, he's written a book on Qigong, the ancient Chinese way to health. Apparently, it works for him. Uh, China's Major Mysteries, which talks about some UFO contact and pyramids. Uh, very interesting. Um, that's a mystery that isn't overly uh, uh, talked about. Um, he's famous for the uh, Empty Force book, which I have mentioned already. The Ultimate Martial Art, it's subtitled which is about generating this huge amounts of energy so you can then actually punch somebody at a distance. And of course, this kind of chi building and um, uh, throwing it, even though his system is, um, I don't know, I find it kind of bizarre. Uh, a lot of this qigong stuff um, you're just you're just building chi and i'm not sure there's any you have all these movements and, everything. and if you look at books particularly from china on qigong there are thousands and thousands of qigong systems is one better than the other well i don't know apparently you can do anything as long as you consciously think about generating chi to build it up so but he thinks that's standing still and i'm not sure that that's real and i don't think that he would tell people in a book any practical potent secrets he's going to give you the basics which are known out there but i don't believe he's going to give out any secrets i think he's stated that already in empty force and it's something we need to note that um you know this ain't for whitey uh, no westerners and I believe this, and uh, I think everybody has that kind of prejudice from societies, and there's certainly nothing nice and kind about any culture, and the Chinese are certainly there. They murder more people than anybody on the planet now. They execute, torture, and murder more people than anybody. They even beat out number two, which is the Iranians. Iran kills the second most. So, um, depending on how those figures change, but they're always number one. And we're not talking, well, they got a billion. No, no, the per, it's all per capita based. So they, they execute a huge amount of people in China. So we need to um, uh, understand that. that and uh, it's a very corrupt political system as the entire world is. So all of this needs to be fully understood in terms of what's going on and who the Chinese are. But that gives you kind of a background. We don't know too much more. I believe he talked about his life in Northern California in, um, in his book, Empty Force. Uh, it's been probably 10 years since I've read that book. But he did go into some of his private life and people he taught and other things. It's a great book. I highly recommend both of those books in particular. I've not read his Qigong book or his um, Chinese um, mystery books, but certainly uh, since this is an area uh, few people know about um, and very little information comes out of China, um, these certainly are well worth reading, and I found all of his books to be interesting and well-written. So, uh, of course, I recommend them. Um, so getting back to this book, because um, there's very little, as I said, past that, and I'm not sure he has any, quote, history that needs to be repeated past that. But needless to say, he's reached 92, uh, and uh, his uh, Qigong system certainly are energizing him, because that's a uh, quite a, an age in general for someone to reach, and uh, I'm assuming he's in fairly good condition. I don't know. That's always the question with that, and uh, we are not really living longer. Um, we lived longer before. We went through terrible stages. Now we're starting. Some people are, but Average life expectancy around the world is about 79 as a typical age when you factor in everything. And it's, again, it's per capita. It's not that one person lives to be 100 and then you've got people who die in their 40s and 50s from heart attacks. Well, um, so it's, it's, it's averaged out.
as a little note, I can't find any website dedicated to him personally or his books. I'm assuming because of his age and lack of um, computer knowledge, which is typical of older people, uh, that there is none, and he doesn't seem to have anyone that has posted anything for him. His books are listed in many places at lots of different prices, uh, so you need to look at that. But I don't find anything particularly on him or his personal website or anything dedicated to his books, etc. Uh, so that's interesting to note. So, um, the book claims that since 1982, the Chinese government has been heavily supporting and researching these areas. Again, we don't know. And somebody would have to go in there and start looking at literature to verify what he has stated. Um, I guess he has some credibility. But you've got to understand that these people um, have family in China. They tend not to speak against the government. They are careful about this. So they're not going to come out with critical books. They have lots of family that could be taken and murdered by these horrible uh, controlling governments. Uh, in, for that matter, in Russia and China as well. And of course, people are harassed other places as well. It's just not as direct. So we have to take it. Now he documents through this, talks about the many different institutes what they studied, uh, a lot of their case histories, and um, it goes on and on. I mean, the feats listed in this book, which I'm not going to go into because there's too many of them. If you're really interested in it, um, you need to read the book. I mean, there's just hundreds of examples of the, of, of the, they had psychics that could actually send objects into your body. They had psychics that can pull objects out of your body. They did this, I believe, with um, chickens or, or so forth that they actually put items in them and then the psychic was able to take them out psychically. Um, and of course they seem to have an institutionalized look at this thing watching children and so forth. Now how much of this is going on I have no idea. Um, again the book states that this is fairly common but I tend to doubt it but um, you know, people tend not to put money in these areas. They're very greedy. You know, they're going through their industrial revolution and um, everybody is free to make lots of money. You're basically, apparently not free to do much of anything else. And there's always been a great negativity to occultism as this is. It's been seen, as I mentioned, as stupid mysticism coming from the West. Now, this is what Stalin said. This is what Mao said. This is even was talked about in uh, people who think that the Nazis were so occult-based. Well, they threw all the occultists in concentration camps. Now, I'm not sure if that was because the occultists had some sort of honor and didn't want to work for the Nazis, but generally they closed down all of these kind of places because they wanted to control the information going out. So if you published an astrology, well generally that means that that organization was closed down and possibly you were thrown in a concentration camp. So most of the uh, runic people where people think that the Iranian Germans, otherwise known as Nazis and Germans in general, were so occult based. But top occultists, Marby, which was one of them, was thrown in prison during World War II. And so were many others. So uh, this is not the case that uh, everybody is so great about this. Um, there seemed to have been a, um, a pragmatic practicality from the Germans where they were trying to find people they could use and get the information they wanted from. And Hitler, of course, had his own Jewish psychic um, that he murdered because the guy said, well, you're, it doesn't look good for the future for you. Well, that's not a good thing to tell someone, I guess, instead of them being uh, forewarning is being forearmed, um, they decided to kill him. So this is very typical. So, um, so there isn't this openness that people think there is. Uh, you know, the reason I keep uh, stating that is that it's important because some there's a feeling out there, again, uh, what's pretty, pretty much urban legend that uh, Russians and Chinese are super metaphysical and everything they did was metaphysical based and they're open to it. Wrong. Communists do not embrace metaphysics. This is tied into religion. 
into belief systems that they don't want to support because if they have groups of people who are Taoist sorcerers, well, that means they're not communist slaves. So they're against all this stuff. And a lot of these people were murdered by probably by the millions during Mao's reign. Anybody that has anything to do with this. And a lot of this happened in Russia as well. Before the big opening to these areas, many people were murdered and put in gulags for any type of activities like this. So the fact that they're a little bit more open now is a good question. How much? What's a little? How is it built in? Uh, the difference is, is that uh, the societies tend not to be so against it. Here, which has been a contrived and forced factor since basically the Reagan uh, administration, there's been a great born-again Christian movement to stifle any kind of personal empowerment. But of course, these personal empowerments come from God, but that's not how they see it. Uh, they want to label everything as demonic if you're not basically a little slave to a God form. And of course, this is the way uh, they look at things. So you're not supposed to have any power. God decides everything for you. That's the ultimate rap from all religions. Um, you don't control your life. God controls it. So when you try and do it, that's evil. And this is what's called the birth of Satanism, etc., because people see this as the path where we have the freedom to do that. But that's an extor distortion of what's going on. So if we look at this in a greater detail, we can understand that. So this book, which is very large in page count, um, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it must be three, 400 pages, goes into... Um, information of exactly what they did uh, in terms of recording the different feats they had. This is not a practical book. There isn't instructions on how to do things in there. Of course, there's always instructions for those people who are highly evolved or advanced practitioners of manifesting science. Well, anytime you read something like this, you, you pick up different techniques that are in there, uh, either between the lines or, or subtly stated. This is not a how-to book. But they talk about what people did and who they are and their psych-ups to a degree. And this all can help you. But this is a, um, it's not a practical bug. So it's important to understand that. Um, so he is well documented. He has a big bibliography of all the Chinese texts. But who can check any of this? Because it's all in Chinese. And of course, that's what the value of having him do it is. So the whole idea is that um, we have no idea. Now, here's the problem with the Russians, the Chinese, and I guess a certain amount of other people, is that they're always the best. They're always number one. What they're doing is wonderful. And it really doesn't add up. So they're so super psychic. They have everything. Um, well, where's the proof of this? What are they doing? But as he said, this is the rub of this entire field. Uh, you act and be silent. You don't give away these things. They're too mind-blowing. People are so scared by it that talking about it either makes people frightened or they find it so outrageous and have no credibility that they don't want to help and support you. So um, it's very difficult to find out what the actual truth is. What have the Chinese done with any of that? Cer certainly, who knows? They built their empire off of American money. And of course, the rest of the world, the number one client of the Chinese is the EU. They buy more goods from China than anybody. So, um, so the whole idea is that's what's running their slave dictatorship economy. And I don't think any of these people are spiritual. I don't care whether they have their little ceremonies and other things. The bottom line is that they are Maoist communists following a system that empowers and makes them wealthy. So it's very easy to believe in something when it's stuffing huge handfuls of cash in your pocket all the time. So any dressing you give to it uh, is um, something that helps you. You got to remember that Kung Fu and Shaolin monasteries were persecuted for many years. Uh, many of them were murdered, um, almost wiped out. Now what they've done, because, hey, there's money in it, they're allowing this to happen. Let the tourists come over and look for Kung Fu Man. 
So they do that because there's money in it. How spiritual it gets or anything past that is no interest to them whatsoever, but they let the people doing that flourish because of the fact that they will make money and the government will benefit from that. So all of those things now are semi-encouraged at a certain level, but it's more of a tourist attraction than you would say they're, form, they're supporting a religious or spiritual belief. So this all ties into what this is. So do they have the capacity to support and um, uh, these types of research and to work with these people? Do they understand it? Are they caught in silly Chinese mysticism, which enslaves them? Are they caught in too much science, which proves absolutely nothing? So uh, a lot of this, as I said, is unknown and we can't really get information. Paul's not going to come out and talk like this because fear of retribution of family and the fact that he is Chinese, the superior race, like they all tell us. They're all the superior races. They're all the master race, uh, the kind of nonsense you've heard from all, all the people who have been horribly defeated. And the Chinese were horribly defeated uh, by a whole group of people, including the Mongols, the British, and um, the West in general. So they, they didn't show any great... Um, uh, ability, even with their massive amounts of people. They even didn't show their great cunning. They had a problem. The British were able to invade at a particular critical time with its Indian army from India because the Chinese couldn't move their cannons in a particular direction. So they knew that and they just put their boats in that direction and they were unable to affect them with their cannons. <laughs> I mean, that's how stupid... Um, their ability of warfare was. So let's not get that these are all genius of all people or not and that there's this great spiritual movement. There isn't. Even in the Shaoling and Kung Fu schools, it's a fighting skill. There's not any, uh, very little, depending in, unless you're in a particular temple, that has to do with spiritual training. They also put on demonstrations. They look for people to bring into their organization because they go around the world as Shaolin doing shows making money. So all of this is part of the process of what's going on and something that everyone needs to understand. And you've got to understand that these are horrible dictatorships which will murder and torture you at a drop of a hat. So you're not going to come out with a book that is controversial. You're going to come out with a book that makes everybody look good. And the same thing goes for the Soviet Union. Frankly, the Soviet Union, who has been kind of open and connected to the West, particularly since they run most of Europe and they have their surrogate out there, their German uh, controlled um, uh, business people, but they're not interested in that. They're just, apparently, they're, uh, they have put out absolutely nothing. They could have filtered if they had any great things out to the West. They don't, they have some people offering courses, but they all seem to be a con. They don't have anything. They don't have any technology. They don't build any machines. And there's very few books that come out from Russia about anything practical in terms of psychic techniques, using machines, or anything else. It is suppressed there. So is it suppressed or just isn't there anything? Well, I tend to think it's more of the latter. There just ain't much coming out from there. Um, as of recent, there's been uh, Gregory Grabani, who is a mathematician, who's come out with some sort of mystical number system based in radionics to produce, he claims, amazing results. And here again, uh, it's hard to figure out what the actual truth is, but uh, he's made outrageous statements that he can raise the dead. Well, where are they? Let's see the proof of that, Grabani. So, sounds like an Italian. So the whole idea is that um, there's no proof of this. He claims to have healed all these people. Well, where are they? So here again, there are political pressures against him. They don't love this guy. They don't support him at a great level. The government is actually against him. And even Putin himself apparently harassed him and had him jailed for a period of time. Um, so what does all that mean? Well, uh, this guy's made outrageous statements. When you say you can bring the dead back to life and charge a lot of money for it, well, there's a problem. Now, that's what's been stated. It's hard to verify that because certainly uh, Gravani's books don't make those kind of outrageous statements. 
his books are very sugary of how he wants to help cure people. So what is he doing that? Does he need money? Well, probably. I'm not sure that him being a mathematician in the Soviet Union pays him that well. So he may need money. Maybe he did this to raise money to survive, etc. And that's where the problem comes in with uh, almost everything in life. It gets down to having to survive and then having to con people because even if you have a skill or an ability, well, it's difficult to make money from that. So you have to then make outrageous promises to get lots of money from people. Sad, but true. So as I said, you can go into and read this book and uh, highly recommend it as a view into that world. As usual, like everything in life, I question its credibility at a very, very high level. I would not believe these um, abilities are very common or that the government is supporting all these research centers. To what reason? Now, they may be vote motivated for military reasons, just as you know, with all the remote viewers that are trying to get people in the United States to get involved in programs so they don't ever have to train anybody because the, it, you can't set up a program like that because uh, the general public will have a fit. So you just make sure that there are things going on uh, by the public by writing books and talking about it. So you have a free school and then you find people who have been trained through these different books uh, that are talented and use them. Now, that's of course what the West does. But what that does is it starts to make everybody else in Russia and China think, well, what are they doing? So it's a response to it. And um, so there's going to be a growth in these areas because of that kind of interest, especially a military interest. Um, are they using remote viewing, the Chinese, to um, for military purposes? Well, I would assume if the Russians and Americans are, why wouldn't they be? And of course, this book further fills that gap in that certainly there is a lot going on or at least was, or for a certain period of time. We don't know, and we don't know how serious it is coming from very communistic conservative Maoists, which are against any kind of, quote, mysticism. And that's what this falls into. So we just don't know. And was there a spurt like there was everywhere in the 80s uh, up to the 90s? Well, yes, apparently there's documentation of that. Is it continuing? We just don't know. But there certainly is a massive amount of magical Taoist feng wei going on. Uh, people have amulets. People have statues. People set up their homes. As I said, giant buildings. They have to be built in a certain way. And if, if this goes against the positive energies like casinos, well, people won't go there. If you're a business, you build in that energetic energy. Uh, um, mysticism to protect yourself. It's expected in that society. As I mentioned with a cannon on the top of a giant banking building, I believe it was. So they don't have any problem with that. They, they understand there's negative energies. They name them, they do something against it, and they move on. So where does that begin and end is the big question. Where are they? Well, we know nothing from there. You find very little information from China because it is a closed society. And if they don't want you doing something, they just kill you and probably your entire family. So it's not something where you can get information from easily to begin with. And you certainly are not going to write anything negative. So, um, very little seems to be translated or coming from China. As usual, everything tends to go from the West to the East, but very little comes from the East to the West um, in terms of books translated and everything else. So when it comes down to especially certain areas, uh, very little is translated. And of course, while there's a huge amount of English speaking Chinese, uh, many that I have met uh, that come over here uh, throughout the tour um, the United States, and I met a guy who was a famous one who's actually in this book, and I've, his name escapes me uh, at this time, but I spent a day with him in a seminar. Um, and the point is, is that 
you know, these people are doing these things. He's very mystical. He has his own followings, but he didn't speak one word of English. He teaches in China. They make enough money. He does have schools in Germany, Spain, and had one in the United States, which I think was closed down because of lack of interest. But that's what happens when you don't have people in your team that speak the language of that country. And of course, he doesn't speak it. So one of the problems with all these people that don't speak English is you can't really have a conversation with them and get any potent information from them. Translators cut everything down. So they make short statements so that there's a conversation, but the bottom line is, is that conversation is usually hollow and lacks substance because the translators aren't too informed and they're not going to spend hours with you figuring out details. So these things be, present huge problems. There are, of course, the always the same problem, translations. How good are the translations? How do they understand it? Well, apparently, um, Paul Dong is a, I don't know if he's, well, he wasn't born here. We can see where he was born from uh, looking him up online, but has lived here most of his life. So the whole idea is we're assuming he knows English <laughs> fairly well. I would not assume that. So what are the translations? What are the slides? How much is left in? How much is left out? Well, uh, the bottom line is, is that this is Chinese information for Chinese, and he needs to make money in English, but he's going to leave out very pertinent information, as he did in the empty force. That is not a complete system. I can tell you right now, I'm not even sure that's a very real system. I think it's a um, something that is misguiding people deliberately, giving them very primitive information. Um, so uh, all of this is part of the bigger picture that nobody really considers. But if you're looking for the gnosis of it, the wisdom, the truth of something, well, what you have to do is you've got to understand all the factors, personal factors, uh, uh, religious factors, political factors, society factors. What are the pressures? Uh, you may want to give out a lot of information. Well, is that going to cost the life of your relatives? Is that good? Well, what you do is modify it. You make money from a book, but you don't give out any secrets. And of course, you're very positive. So the usual prejudice that you get from almost everybody except for stupid Americans who don't seem to want to state how great they really are considering everything comes from America. Uh, you get that from the Russians, you get that from the Chinese, they stick together, etc. And they appoint themselves as their own personal geniuses, gods, and everything else. So when you do that, and when as the Russian Gravani, um, who thinks he's a god and that he can raise the dead if all of these statements are true. So this is the kind of nonsense you run into. So with that, people, uh, it is recommended and uh, everyone should check this out. It's a fascinating read and go out and get it. Until next time.